Hey guys, I'm Bernice Ao from Mother Smith Academy. Today, I'm going to show you how to render a pink baguette cut tourmaline. Before we start rendering, let's take a look at the colors we need for this video using my favorite Albert Dura watercolor pencils. For the main body color, I will use fuchsia and medium purple pink. Then, we will use warm grain number 2 and warm grain number 5 for the cut shadow. Lastly, we will need white gouache paint and a size 15 zero paint brush for the highlights. Alright, let's get started. Before I start rendering though, I will use a neater putty eraser to gently remove some of the graphite from the pencil lines. And this helps avoid them smudging when we shade the gemstone. As you can see, I will apply light pressure. We still want to able to see the lines while shading. Then, let's begin by drawing the outline of the stone as well as the facet junctions with our fuchsia color pencil. If you are rendering a bucket cut for the first time, you can use a ruler to help to draw neat lines. Or you can draw freehand. For this demonstration, I will use a ruler. Alright, now that is our outline is drawn, let's move on to rendering the top pavilion facet which is visible through the table of the gem. I will shade it all over with the fuchsia color pencil using a relatively hard amount of pressure. We will now focus on the main table area. We will shade it darkest at the top left and gradually reduce the pressure on the pencil as we move towards to the bottom right of the table facet. As you can see, I'm shading starting at the top left and gradually reducing the pressure as I move towards to the bottom right of our table facet. Next, let's focus on rendering the crown facet. We will start by shading the bottom facet, applying an even amount of pressure across the entire facet using about the same amount of pressure as we did for our first pavilion facet. Moving on to the second facet, I will begin shading from the bottom and gradually reduce the pressure as I move towards to the top of this facet. For the third facet, located at the top of the stone, we will shade it in the same way as the second facet with the most pressure applied at the right hand side. Finally, for the last facet, I will gently shading from the bottom, reducing the pressure as I move towards the top 
to the imaginary light source. Our first layer of color is done. Now, I will add a layer of medium purple pink color pencil to make it brighten and more vibrant. I'm shading with this pencil in exactly the same way as I did with my previous pencil. We are not quite done yet though. I'm going to add a little warm grey number 5 to the top of the pavilion facet using gently even pressure all over the facet. I found this just helps differentiate the facet from the table facet that a little bit more and makes it a bit more obvious it's on the pavilion rather than the crown facet of the gemstone. Then, to make the gemstone appear more lively, I will trace some lines with my medium purple pink pencil, especially those that have become unclear after shading. You can use a ruler to draw these lines, but I will do it freehand. Alright, let's add highlights using white gouache paint and the paintbrush. I will start by drawing a line from the center of the kill line, extending it all the way to the bottom until it meets the facet junction. Then, I will trace the facet junction at the bottom right, on the pavilion side of the gem. I don't take this line all the way to the girdle of the stone, but stop at the edge of the table facet junction before the outline of my table facet. Next, I will add in lines along all the crown facet junctions with one exception. I will leave the facet junction at the bottom edge of the table as just a color pencil line.
Then, to add a little more dimension to the stone, I will use the white gouache to trace the outline on the left side. As always, we will add a couple of highlights by painting two straight parallel lines perpendicular to the imaginary light source, directly over the area I just shaded. Don't forget to add a single dot as well for the extra sparkles. Just a few more reflections to add, I promise. Here, I am going to add a reflection on the left and right sides of the crown facet by drawing two straight lines, each approximately 5mm long. Finally, if you are drawing a standalone stone, you can add a cast shadow. As always, we will use warm grain number 2 and warm grain number 5 color pencils to draw the cast shadow. I will draw the crisp cast shadow line with our warm grain number 5 color pencil. Then, I will shade the line slightly and widen it just a little with my warm grey number 2. Remember, we don't want the total thickness of the cut shader to exceed 2mm. And there we have it, our pink tomali baguette cut is all done. 